Okay, as you guys can see and probably hear, I put in a few new audio filters, so there should be a lot less noise moving forward. Plus, the camera is going to be stationary from here on out, so there is going to be less bouncing and all that. And to top it off, today's is going to be a little bit more time intensive, as you might be able to see in the bottom left corner, just because there is going to be a history lesson involved. And we, there's a lot to unpack in today's video. That's all I got to say. So this first story is going to be the one that's more time intensive and cover the history. But because of how long it's going to take, it'll be broken up into two parts. So do keep that in mind if you see the breaks in editing or anything like that. So first off, we do have to talk about the SRB, which itself was created in a response to controversy. That controversy was the heavily violent games of the time, Mortal Kombat and Night Trap. As I'm sure many of you are very well aware, Mortal Kombat is heavily realistic depictions of blood, guts, and the use of fatalities. And Night Trap at the time was considered to be sexually suggestive and exploitive. But Nintendo and Sega, two of the, the biggest publishers of the time, had a very a different, differing views on objectionable content. And we, we see that even now. Up until, up until just a couple years ago, Nintendo tried to focus more on child-friendly, ev everybody can play this type games, such as Mario or uh, Mario Party, Th things like that. M maybe even Legend of Zelda. But they, they focused more on in-house, single-party games, and their brand didn't really grow too much as a result. Yeah, chances are I'm wrong about that last part, but this isn't really too much of a video about Nintendo specifically. Anyway, Sega at the time had their own in-house rating system, the Video Games Rating Council, which was intended to rate games released for their own consoles, and Mortal Kombat and Night Trap were rated MA-13 and MA-17, respectively. However, as a result of that controversy, um, there were a few, there, there was one particular hearing between, that included Lieberman and Cole, yeah, Joe Lieberman of Connecticut and Herb Cole of Wisconsin talking about video game violence, corruption of society, and the effects therein. Specifically, how those, how those two games played out with relation to that corruption. It was only later on, in April of 94, that the Interactive Digital Software Association was created through the coalition of Sega, Acclaim Entertainment, and Electronic Arts. That software association would later become the regulatory framework for the Electronic Software Rating Board, which we know today. And they have been working pretty well all the way up until now, giving us age-based ratings for every single piece of gaming software that we see in North America. And it's even gone so far as to break it down into six specific categories. Early childhood, everyone, or E for everyone, E10+, plus, E for teen, M for mature, which is rated 17 and up. And that one specifically requires that you show ID at many retailers. And one last rating, which many people aren't aware of, adults only, which requires that you be at least 21. And that rating in particular scares away many retailers. Simply because of, of the adults only 21 plus rating. 
So I wouldn't be surprised if many of you weren't aware of that one up until this point. Oh, you, you want to know my favorite part about this entire massive thing? So President Trump is part of the generation that most people would associate with Boomer. And as such, he blamed violence on video games. One of the worst things about that is that the ESRB has taken steps and many retailers have taken steps to, well, to, to enforce the rating of games and the sale of games which have those ratings. There is not a game in, the, in North America that does not have a rating of some kind, even if it's just rating pending. There is a rating of some kind on every single game in order to be sold in the United States. And even still, many retailers such as Walmart and GameStop require use of an ID of some kind in order to sell video games that have an M rating, which is what many of these shooters have. At least, well, many of them at least have a team, because at that point you have enough rationalization to understand that violence against people is bad. But as such, President Trump is aiming to crack down. And I do mean crack down. Th those are his exact words. Let's see. Let let's quote him, shall we? It is too easy for troubled youth to surround themselves with a culture that celebrates violence. We must stop or substantially reduce this, and it has to begin immediately. The gruesome and gri grisly video games that are now commonplace must be addressed to stop the glorification of violence in our society. As I'm sure some of you are already aware, there have been a few studies done over the past few decades that attempt to link violence and video games in some way. And as a result, there have been many differing results, whether it be a direct link against violence, a direct link for violence, or no link at all. Those are the three most common results that you will find when it comes to, well, the three only results, actually, when it comes to linking video games to violence and games. But they have been the biggest escape route, starting with the Columbine Massacre in 99, being blamed on shooters like Doom. But what, what does that mean for virtual reality? Simply because VR is a far more immersive medium, we can directly infer that if any such crackdown occurs, which when it comes down to it is not likely to be Case, which I'll later. If any such crackdown occurs, VR games will be hit the hardest, simply because that uh, distancing of humanity, which they so often enjoy citing in the in these very well divisive quotes, is far more intensive when it comes to reality. Now, that being said, one of the things that is going to be helping us out is that in 2011, the Supreme Court ruled a California law that blocked the sale of violent games to children was unconstitutional. As a result, it is not very likely that any laws are going to come out of this, restricting the sale of video games. That being, however, what we may end up seeing as a result is possibly a tighter restriction on ESRB in an attempt to reel it in or make it a government agency. 
At the moment, it is a non-regulatory self, well, it's a non-profit self-regulatory agency. Not under the hold, not under the current hold of the United States government or any North American government for that matter. As a result, it has been deemed at times to be in the pocket of the publishers themselves and slightly controversial. So that is something that we may have to keep an eye out for in coming months or years. Perhaps in response either to the shootings or Trump's calls for cracking down on games, Walmart has issued a document with a bulleted list of specific actions for employees to take, such as turning off or unplugging any PS4 or Xbox consoles that show violent games, as well as canceling events that promote combat or third-person shooter games. On top of that, they are already moving to remove any sort of displays that, well, show violence. However, when asked, when cornered by activists, or rather encouraged by activists, Walmart has refused to end the gun policy and stop selling weapons. So they will continue to sell weapons and guns and, and all that, but they're just going to take down the the pictures of guns. They're still going to sell guns, but not video game guns. So that's likely a move to end or to curb their PR, but not a very good one in the long run. If you guys are still here and you're feeling charitable in some way, you can activate that charity in a few different ways. The first one, you can go to HumbleBundle.com and pick out one of the bundles that they have for sale there. When you get one of these bundles, you're not, you're not only able to get some good software or books or games or what, whatever it is that you're, you're choosing, but you're also able to support a charity of your choice. They have a few different ones available, so you don't have to feel necessarily tied down to helping children or animals. Even though, well, animals are always a good one, aren't they? And then, if that is up your speed, I'm selling these headphones on Amazon. Link on screen. I personally use them. I really like them. And they've been working out really well for me. If that still doesn't really work out well for you, I've got a link on screen also for my Patreon. Well, up here somewhere. I, I don't know where I'll put it. But you'll find it somewhere, I hope. Probably, maybe. Uh, I think this is a good place to end the video. If you guys liked it, let me know. If you hated it, let me know. And as always, don't forget to tell me how I'm such a horrible person for giving you all this news. Ta-ta for now.